Then we do range of motion at the wrist and the hand. So flexion, extension, and ulnar flexion like this. And actually, that, that was, no, radial flexion is like this. And this is ulnar flexion. Good. And flexion at the MCP joints like this, metacarpophalangeal joints, and extension. Good. And last but not least, not least make a fist. Mm -hmm. Good. That's range of motion in the wrist and the hand. Last thing again, we'll test strength. And to test strength in the wrist and hand, first we'll get you just to push down. Just hold your hand down like this mm -hmm. and don't let me straighten it. Now just make a fist and hold your hand up and don't let me push it down. Good. Now hold on to my fingers and don't don't let me let them go. Okay, fight back. Good. That's good. Great. And spread your fingers out. Don't let me push them together. Okay. And now take your thumb and your little finger and don't let me pull my finger out. Good. And that's strength in the wrist and hand. So that's systematically inspection, range of motion, palpation. There are a couple of special tests that you might do if you're considering carpal tunnel syndrome in your diagnosis. Uh, the first one is Tunnel sign, just tapping over the median nerve as it passes through the carpal tunnel. And a positive test in this situation will be if you get the tingling and the distribution of the median nerve, and that's generally on this part of the hand here. The second one would be um, Phelan's test, where you have the patient put the um, back surface of their hands together, okay? Keep that together and bend your wrist as much as you can and just hold it there. Bend it down. Mm -hmm. Just like you have, or just like you are, and just hold it right there. And after a period of 30 to 60 seconds, the patient may experience their symptoms. They may have pain or uh, numbness in the distribution.